No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We're in here today with a very important part of Chicago rap history. Mm-hmm. The one and only Tay Sav. How you doing, man? How you feeling? I'm good, man. Just happy to be here. You already know. Yeah, nice to have you out here. I see you smoking that good Cali dope, or you bring that with you? No, I just got this from out here from my homie, man. This shit real, real is like right up. Yeah, man, it's going down. Um, what uh, what brings you out here? What, what else are you doing while you're in town? Uh, my boy Lil TJ was trying to link up with me. I just was with him last night. Mm-hmm. I ended up falling asleep and shit. We was supposed to go to the studio. Then my birthday was just yesterday too. So oh shit, I came happy out birthday! Here to just catch that vibe. Thank you. How old are you? I'm just turned 22. Holy shit. You done a lot of living, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. Not enough, though. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know, you are the younger brother of the one and only young Pappy, who, yep. you know, was basically taking Chicago by storm around, what, like 2015 was yeah. kind of like the, the big blowout year before he, he was uh, taken from us? Yep, yep. He was going crazy. I was, uh, around that time, I was still producing. I wasn't even rapping right. then. I was making beats for him, man. We was just making it happen. He really, he really took it to the next level for sure. So let's talk about like your younger, younger days when you were like real young. What was uh, your upbringing like at that at that point? And and talk about the environment that you were being raised in. I mean, uh, I come from a two parent home, big family. Eight, it's eight of us total. My siblings, you know, what eight I'm saying? kids Plus, in total. Okay. Yeah, and I'm the youngest. So growing up, it was just you know what I'm saying a lot of hectic shit. You know what I'm saying being the youngest. Mm-hmm. But I ain't really had that much responsibility because there's so many of us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I first originally, like as far as back as I can remember, came up back to the north side around 2004. You know what I'm saying? Lived in the uptown area. Before that, we was living on the south side on 53rd. Mm-hmm. Then shit, you know, it was just, it was cool, you know? Up north, when I, was, when I was a real young boy, I wasn't really thinking about the streets like that wasn't, I never even knew that they existed at first, you know what I'm saying? I was just around, you know what I'm saying? Then when shit started happening, you know, my brother started getting in the streets, I started seeing it, trying to follow behind him, you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? He didn't really want that type of lifestyle for me, so he always tell me, like, I'm tweaking and, you know what I'm saying, stay in the house and focus on school and shit like that. But he always been rapping as long as I've been living. Oh, okay. So the rap part of it came before you guys really, like, found out about the street shit or got even involved in that? my brother been rapping since he was a baby. Like, literally, like, four years old, he been rapping, like, wanting to do this shit, like, and reading the dictionary, just learning new words, and had a little rhyme dictionary, trying to learn what words rhyme with what, all type of shit, like, he been rapping before the internet, like, mm-hmm. so, yeah. So, he pushed you in the direction to get into making beats at some point, or how did that happen? Yeah, he, he convinced me that I should do it, because it would just be easier for him, you know what I'm saying, to just have the beats, and then we own everything, you know what I'm saying, and just take over like that as a team, and... I like music, you know what I'm saying? Because of my brother, my older brother too, you know what I'm saying, B-U-W, mm-hmm. he was rapping. He taught my other, he taught Pappy how to rap. So it was just like, I was just fascinated with how raw they was with this shit. Like, I just couldn't believe it. So I just started to, you know what I'm saying, wanted to get involved with that, but I didn't see myself rapping. So right. that's how that happened. So, so then how did he kind of start to gravitate more towards the street shit? And like, I, I have to ask the question, like when Chief Keef and that whole drill movement came out in Chicago, how much of an impact and how much of a change did that make? Because I feel like for any kid from Chicago, that was like a, a crazy moment right. where everything changed. I mean, I, I feel like the turning point was when people that was close to my brothers, they started dying and you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. Shit went from fighting to killing, you know what I'm saying? And my brother, you know what I'm saying? He he takes shit really hard like that, you know what I'm saying? So that's when that happened. But my brother been fucking around since like 2008, so that's before the Chief Keef era. But the Chief Keef era definitely affected the whole Chicago. I say that just, that affected Chicago because everybody got more disrespectful like mm-hmm. after that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I noticed after the Chief Keef era, really. Because you all of a sudden had a dude who was like the most successful young kid from Chicago, and his whole brand was, you know, him, you know, not, we know Sosa for just basically being like unapologetically himself, right. but he was somebody who was talking shit, clearly <coughs> wrapped up in the street stuff, whatever, and like yeah. brought it to his music, and it was like, it was only a matter of time before people could start seeing that, and like the younger generation wanting to sort of emulate that to a certain right. extent. Yeah, that's that's basically what happened. Like, once Sosa came out and all them, Lil Reese and Fredo and all them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna really say too much Fredo because he didn't really like name drop this people like that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But he kind of stayed away from a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, he. You know and I think he didn't want Keith to be on that as much at a certain point. Right, but 
yeah, like everybody just felt like they had to challenge that, you know what I'm saying? To, Go go above the next disrespectful whatever you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying that's just how I'm on the paint of course but they just hear what the next motherfucker saying about they people like oh yeah I'm gonna say something back that's just ten times just worse just escalate you know what I'm worse like, and worse just yeah. escalate now everybody just you know what I'm saying it's just the norm now mm -hmm. because a motherfucker made that popular you know what I'm saying definitely so when did Young Pappy start to get a buzz going like do you, do you remember what that was like the first little hints that he was gonna be something yeah uh, he he had um. Came home from like, he was a juvenile, he was in juvenile prison. He came home from juvenile prison. We had like this little laptop and he just recorded like. And what was he locked up for at that time? I don't even remember. I, probably like some robbery shit or something like that. Just some goofy shit he used to be doing back in the day. But okay. He we had this little ass laptop and he just came home like focused on rapping. Like, man, I'm finna just go crazy. He had like 15 mixtapes of raps. Like literally like all type of fucking notebooks filled with that shit. And, he just downloaded this Audacity on there, like, and just recorded that shit off the laptop and just dropped it. Like, he remixed that uh, Drake and Two Chain song, Oh My, like, and okay. just dropped it on YouTube, like, and that shit was like the quality was bogus as fuck. But I was just like, damn, he not playing, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then he got locked back up and came home quick though, you know what I'm saying? He was like still focusing. He was like, man, I need to buy a microphone so it could sound better, you know what I'm saying? Like, but he was on house arrest, so this was around like 2012. Yeah, this was around 2012. Mm -hmm. And then he got out of house arrest and just started shooting videos, you know what I'm saying? But he was, he always was just inconsistent because he steady was in and out of jail. But I say around like the end of 2012, like I really saw like when he shot his first video, I knew it was going to be that because he already had the support of the whole North Side. Everybody been knowing he knew how to rap since forever because he been like, yeah, motherfucker, see him and ask him to rap, spit this, spit that. Like he'll just be rapping and rapping. Like, Rapping against motherfuckers, so every motherfucker he was behind him, mm. and yeah, he just shot the first video and never looked back. But he got locked up, steady getting locked up, and then he came home and remixed Chirac. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like this is around 20, 2014 now, or 13. He came home and remixed Chirac and sent it to me, and I was just like, oh man, like he ain't playing, like right. he really not playing, like and this shit finna go to that point because at first he felt like he had to dumb a lot of his songs down just to, you know what I'm saying for people to like him more because he always been lyrical, you know what I'm saying? Like, so he just was making music, just party music, shit that people would just like catch on too quick. But then he was starting to get back to that lyrical, but still like hype, you know what I'm saying? So Do you think that when he was doing those little bids that that partially like helped put him on to like the shit that he should be rapping about? Cause I always hear from like younger <laughs> dudes who they get locked up and all of a sudden they're around like a shitload of older dudes who are really with the business. And then all of a sudden they fucking just get put onto the game a whole lot more. And like in this sense, it sounds like his music started to crack off like around that time. You think there was an influence from that? Of course. Yeah. You go, you go to jail, you meet a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Real dudes that's in there, you know what I'm saying? That been there, you know what I'm saying? And been in your shoes too, you know what I'm saying? So. I could definitely say that had an impact on him steadily having to go through that process, you know what I'm saying, and deal with the, the system and, you know what I'm saying, deal with the people inside of the system on both sides of the system. So, mm. yeah, I, I, I definitely, because that take an effect on me and my music, you know what I'm saying? Like, every time I done been in and out of jail, I come home and I just feel like I'm way beyond what I just mm. was before I was locked up, you know what I'm saying? Right. So do you feel like, like at that time when he was first starting to come out, were you guys deep in the street shit enough that, like, did he have enemies at that point? Was that was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, right. it, it was already up there at that point, like, because people was already dying on both sides, you mm. know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no looking back at the end, like, like I said, like, when Sosa came out and, like, popularized it to just be disrespectful, like, you know mm. what I'm saying, towards, well, I ain't gonna say just Sosa, you know what I'm saying, but the whole Sosa era, you know what I'm saying, mm. made that shit more popular, you know what I'm saying? And, Every motherfucker took that shit and ran with it, you know what I'm saying? And Pappy brought that shit up north, you know what I'm saying? And it just like, every yeah, motherfucker up north was shocked that he was even coming like that, you know what I'm saying? Because people up north wasn't really doing shit like that. People up north wasn't even making music like that, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, but he was already a known rapper on the north side, like, the, one of the best motherfuckers, him and my older brother, B.U. Double, like, they was the two best rappers on the north side. Like, they was all over just killing motherfuckers, rapping, like, mm -hmm. on the street, you know what I'm saying? Before they was even recording music. Right. So every motherfucker already knew about that shit, so... When he just started shooting videos and all that shit, and that, that just made it just get even bigger and bigger. You know what I'm saying? Mm, definitely. And so you were just, like, to what extent were you around for that whole ride that he was on in that sense? Because, like, you know, he's, he's doing it rapping-wise. Were you making some of those beats that he was rapping on at that point? 
Not in, not in the very beginning. Not no, the like, early ones, Yeah, right. but, like, not the ones he was shooting videos to and, like, you know. But, yeah, because we was doing it at the same time. Like, I feel like when his quality improved, my quality improved. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, because we started from just, like, off a little microphone. Well, really just the computer. Like, we was recording off the computer's microphone at first. And then I was just trying to make beats off that same slow-ass computer. Like, and then, like, once we got more computers and then he got a microphone and then he started going to a studio and then I started meeting other people who was doing music and they was helping me. We all helping each other. It was just getting better. So, like, yeah, I was around for the whole process. So did you start feeling like he was, was he, like, famous in the area, like, pretty early on? Like, were those YouTube videos having that effect of, like, really making him, like, a celebrity in the city? Yeah, but not, like, throughout the whole city. Just, right. like, he always stood out as an individual in the first place. You know what I'm saying? He was already a popular person, like, because he always moved around and he always met new people. He always interacted. He was a social person, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people knew him just off knowing him, you know what I'm saying? And if you knew him, you knew he rapped already. So once you see this shit, you gonna really like want to see this shit cause you know what you finna see. Right. Like you want to see him do it. Cause every motherfucker gonna tell him you need to just focus on rapping. You gonna make it, you raw as fuck. Like I never heard nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that was people reaction every time he just rapped to them. Like, if you was right here, if you was right here right now, you told him to just spit something right now. Like he wouldn't see it stop rapping tomorrow or something. Like that's how much raps he had in his head. You, know? you always know that kind of guy who just yeah. like some people go in the booth to rap and some people are just freestyling. That's just their way of existing. Yeah, he would just he would just another animal with that shit. I don't even know how to describe it. So was he trying to encourage you to sort of stay away from being involved with gang shit and violence and stuff like that, or what was the attitude about that? Yeah, he was. Like, he he didn't condone me with that nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, he was so focused on <clears throat> whatever it is that he had going on. It's like, he couldn't really make sure that I wasn't doing what it is that I, he didn't want me doing. You know mm. what I'm saying? So... I would still be doing shit behind his back, you know what I'm saying? Behind my whole family back, like, none of them would know, you know what I'm saying? I'd just run with a whole totally separate crowd, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just do whatever it is that I wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that I seen them doing, mm. that I felt like they was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that was just my curiosity for whatever it is that they was doing in the street, you know what I'm saying? Like, Were your parents kind of in the dark about what their son's lives were becoming like? My mom, yeah. Like, my mom was a lot in the dark about it, but my daddy, like, he he, he was in the street himself, so he could already see the tendencies, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. but he, he never really had no certainty about me, you know what I'm saying? Like, he knew my other two brothers, of course, yeah, but right. nobody in my family really knew what I was doing like that because I just keep it secret because I didn't want none of them to know because I was basically living a double identity at first. <laughs> like, this good kid with my family and just in the street doing all type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. So what what happened in this situation? There was a time where you ended up taking a gun charge for them. Was that super early on? Yeah, that was like that was like right around the time my brother and we was all going crazy. Like that shit was wild. My brother had just came home from a gun case and we was at it was crazy because all my brothers in the same house. Mm. Me, my oldest brother to the youngest brother. It's four of us. Like we all in the house. It's my homie, my brother homie, two cups, you know what I'm saying? That's our homie. And it was that's it, I think. But we is finna leave, you know what I'm saying? I guess my oldest brother, baby mama, was in California. He didn't answer the phone for her or something. And he, and she, and he had their son out here with us, you know what I'm saying? And so she called the police on him, you know what I'm saying? Like, and said he basically kidnapped the son. So we finna leave out the house, and the, it's the whole 24th district police is at the door already. Like, they was finna knock at first, but we just opened the door, and they right here already, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. and this. A gun right here on the table, all type of shit. But we on our way out, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this is how this even this situation even came about. So it's just like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all in here. Like, all my brothers felons, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the only motherfucker in here, a juvenile, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so I just spoke up and told him, like, man, that's my gun, you know? Uh -huh. What would have happened if nobody took credit for the gun? My oldest, my old, my brother Bu Double, he would have, he would have, he would have had to take the case because his name was on at least mm. of, of the crib, you know what I'm saying? But. <clears throat> but had they ever had the conversation with you at that point about like this is how you're supposed to behave if this kind of thing occurs like did, were they having the no snitching conversation or the like if it comes down to it you might have to take a charge conversation I mean no I already had that in my head like they didn't even have to tell me that cause it's just like it's nothing I wouldn't do for my brothers like and these are the two people I look up to the, the most in the world like and I know both both of my brothers literally just came home my brother my older brother just got home from a conspiracy charge and and my other brother just came home, Pappy just came home from a gun charge, so they both finna go away for a long time if any of this shit going on them. So I know if I go, if if 
if I get locked up for this shit right now, I'm finna be out the next day. Like, I already had that in my head because mm. I'm a juvenile. I'll probably come home tonight. That's what I was thinking what was going to happen. But How long did you actually go in? A day, like a night. A I just spent the night in there, and they let me out the next day. Really? So they didn't even press charges against you after that? They did. Like, I, I had to plead out the probation. That shit fucked me up. <laughs> right. Okay. But did it take a while for that to go into effect? Or was that all during, like, him still being on the rise and everything? Or did yeah, you end up like, doing that later? Yeah, like... like like a month later, I just took probation for it because I was just like, fuck that shit. I don't want to keep going to court and all that goof ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I was a juvenile, so it, it, I was like, when I'm 18, this, none of this shit is going to matter. Mm. And so that's how that went about. But I was on probation like during that whole time. like I was steady getting on house arrest and all type of goof ass shit because my probation officer, you know what I'm saying? He was just like on me about being in the street too. Mm. Damn, that's crazy. Okay, so... Was there also, there's a story about him getting shot at McDonald's? Was, yeah. Where, what, where does that fall in this whole timeline? That was early on? That was, no, nah, that was like 2014. That's like the big, February 2014. Oh, okay. One of my friends got killed in that occasion. In, in that same shooting? Yeah. Wow, so at this point, like, you guys have kind of gone from, like, basically just being regular kids at the beginning of the story to ending up in situations where you, like, it's, it's kind of crazy you're, you're sort of seeing, like, the life of a kid in Chicago where, you you know, one day you're, like, 14 and shit is kind of relaxed, it's not that crazy, and right. then a couple years later, it's like, you just end up wrapped up in all this crazy-ass shit. Like, you ever take time to stop and think about how, how fucked up that is? Every day, I'll be trying to tell people, like, you know what I'm saying, like, mental health is everything, you know what I'm saying, and they don't understand, like, how to, how this really takes a toll on a person for you to just be going through every day of your life and then consistently losing people close to you to violence, you know what I'm saying, to really petty beef because mm. it's all over nothing at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, And I always tell a motherfucker, like, it never, this was never the plan for shit to turn out like this. And any motherfucker in Chicago would definitely tell you the same thing. Like, we ain't, nobody expected this shit to happen like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. especially all the motherfucking loved ones that we done lost throughout Chicago just from I just say from 2008 to now, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit just, you know? There's, also, there's just that crazy decision that you have to make, too, of are you going to be a person who goes to school or, you know, walks down the street without a gun on him, or are you going to be the type of person who protects himself? And it's it's kind of get fucked either way. Cause you, yeah, like, you know? at the end of the day, every, every motherfucker, nine times out of ten, if you in your right state of mind, you're going to be like, I got to have some form of protection because... It could happen to anybody. It's not even about you being a gang member. Like, you could be, this shit could just be a regular altercation on the street. A nigga will kill you for nothing. Like, mm. it happens every day. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's in Chicago with some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Yeah, they do. It's just, it's a lose lose situation, like you said. Like, either way, you know what I'm saying? On all sides of the board. So, you remember when you first had to make that decision or when you, when you first started to not feel safe, like walking down the street unless you were protecting yourself? Like, when did that become a fixture in your head? It really like when 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 my brother got shot, like when he first got shot the first time, that's when I knew like yeah, like it could be anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause at first it was just like you know it could be anybody, but then when it get like close, then you be like man, like a motherfucker really gotta do what they gotta do to protect themselves because this shit could be any one of us now at this moment because people in your crowd start to get affected. You know what I'm saying? A person close to you die, like a person you be with every day, like then that's when you know like we all need to stick together. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I forgot the reason why I was bringing up the McDonald's thing is because uh, there's like a story. The, the story that I heard was basically that there was the shooting at the McDonald's and then he ended up going back there basically just to, you know, prove a point. And then he ended up getting into another altercation at that McDonald's when he went back there. No, no, none of that. That's happened. not how it happened? No, no, none of that happened. It just, I, it just happened. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh -huh. Uh, I guess a motherfucker. He just sit happened down. to be at the McDonald's again. No, nah, he oh. wasn't. Like they were never at the McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Like it just led to the McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like people started shooting, and people were by the McDonald's. My friend Marquio got killed right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. My brother got shot right there. Another friend of mine got shot right there, and another friend of mine got shot right there. You know what I'm saying? But they was never at the McDonald's yet. You know what I'm saying? They was trying to get to the McDonald's, of course, but they was never there. Okay. Crazy. So, um, I gotta ask this, like, in terms of like all this crazy shit going on and everything, what, were you guys having conversations about leaving Chicago or about like, you know, him getting signed or like being able to sort of elevate your lives like that? It seems like nowadays young rappers realize that potential like pretty early on. And a lot of times you'll see them moving to LA, moving to Atlanta, moving away from the Chicago stuff. 
early on, but did you did you guys have that in your head at that point? Yeah, my my big sister, she 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 lived in Texas because she was going to college out there, and she was married and she had a nice home and she used to always want us to come out there. You know what I'm saying? To stay with her, and I did stay out there with her a couple times. You know what I'm saying? It, Pappy came out there, but he didn't want to really stay out there like that. You know what I'm saying? He just wanted me to stay out there. You know what I'm saying? So I could stay out the streets. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was always a conversation because a motherfucker, the, the violence just was getting so close. You know what I'm saying? It was just so every day. You know what I'm saying? So my sister and my family, they was really the ones trying to persuade a motherfucker to move away. You know what I'm saying? To do whatever it is you got to do to just stay away from this shit because they was just really tired. You know. Mm. Definitely. So, but was he entertaining conversations with the labels and like was was it that kind of thing where they were they were trying to court him? Because nowadays, if you're a young underground rapper, you know you get one song with a million views, boom, you got every label breaking down your door trying to sign you. Right. Yeah. To my understanding, from what I heard from his manager or whatever, he was supposed to be reaching a deal with Atlantic Records. Really? You know what I'm saying around the same time he got killed, but I don't know what to what extent. That is true, you know what I'm saying? But that's just to my understanding. Wow. That would have been crazy. It would have been fucking wild to see him actually have, like, had a sort of more mainstream, yeah. like, music career, you because know? Because that's, that's, like, was his whole style before this drill rap even came into play. Like, he was already so advanced with this shit. Like, literally, because he'd been rapping so long, and he, he just perfected it, you know what I'm saying? Like... I don't know. I really had to describe it. Like he could really have any. He was so versatile. Like every every flow, any style, any any beat, he can get on it and kill it. Like he don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and he don't have to be talking about no killing, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just showed he was a goat for real. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, leading up to uh, the situation. So th- there was one incident where there was this like insane party that did he get arrested at the party or it was just like a crazy ass party you said that like every fucking cop in the city in that area showed up and shit what what was that story yeah that's when i was i was on the run at this time so i went there but that was he had a birthday party (coughs) and um the police came and had that motherfucker surrounded swat team all type of shit yeah motherfucker in that party went to jail for one gun but they had to let everybody go you know what i'm saying because nobody lived there and it was in nobody's possession. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, let me ask you this too. Around that time, it's like the the whole academics thing was sort of like blowing up for the first time. Was that like uh, was that an influence in some way? Like, were you guys looking at the people that academics was talking about on his channel? Because this is like the war in Chirac. This is a very different sort of era. Like academics now, he tends to cover more mainstream artists, but at this time. Like that, when I really go back and like I'm searching his name and shit, Pappy, like that's a lot of the oldest videos about him and shit. Right, yeah, see, I don't, I don't know, cause me personally, I don't watch shit about people in Chicago. Like I'm real life in this shit every day. Like I don't mm. need to see a motherfucker blogging about us that's not even nowhere near around us. Like, and just fabricating shit and just putting more sauce on this shit. Like that shit really gay as fuck, because at the end of the day, you talking about people lost people, you know what I'm saying? Like these is lost loved ones and you just doing this shit for publicity. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't respect shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I never really tune in to shit like that. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I feel like cause a lot of that stuff he's been accused, like now that he's bigger and stuff, it's like he gets kind of accused of having sort of manipulated those situations and maybe talking a little too carelessly about the stuff. And when I go back and watch some of those older Warren Chirac videos, it is kind of, it, it, he's talking about it in like a, a tone that is a little bit more lighthearted than you would ever expect somebody to do right. these days, given the subject matter. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't respect that type of shit because at the end of the day, you just exploiting somebody for your own personal gain. You mm. know what I'm saying? And that I could never respect you at that point because I lost people. You know what I'm saying? And I know people that lost people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that shit not no game when. It's your grandma crying, your mama crying, your auntie crying, your sister crying. Like, and they, mm. they looking at these videos and they, this is the reason they crying. You know what I'm saying? Like, because of how you talking about they lost loved ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just could never respect a motherfucker like that in my life. Did you know Zach TV? Hmm? Did you know Zach TV? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he did an interview with me. Right, exactly, yeah. So, but was he like a factor in terms of that early Chicago stuff? Were you, uh, was, was he... Doing yeah, content yeah, he, about Pappy back was, then and shit. Yeah, he was, um, um, I don't really know. Like, I just know he was he was very active in, in the underground Chicago scene. Period. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that was just his whole mission was to just get everybody more publicity. You know what I'm saying? Because he wanted everybody to win. You know what I'm saying? 
Rest up Zach TV on my soul. No, yeah, I was just thinking about that because it seems like, you know, him, like, like I don't know if we ever really got that much closure about what happened to him and shit, but it just seems particularly fucked up when you have a guy who's, like, really out there in the city trying to support shit and yeah. he ends up getting taken out. I don't understand the circumstances necessarily that led to that. Me either. I, it's, it's a mystery to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the shit happened right downtown Chicago, man. Like, that was fucked up. I ain't, I ain't even want to believe in my damn self, man. Mm. For sure. Um, okay, so in terms of Pappy just blowing up and stuff, like, where, like, at what level had he basically gotten to by the point that he ended up passing? Like, what, what was your perspective on his career and where your whole team was at in the the weeks or the months like leading up to this? Like, in terms of how far along in his career it was or where his mind state was at at the time that he passed? <coughs> by, the, by that time, like, he was. It was like. Everybody around him was telling him, like, man, it's either going to be you finna rap or you finna be in the street because you can only do one. You know what mm. I'm saying? And he was getting to that point where he was getting big, you know what I'm saying, with this rap shit, you know what I'm saying? And real big in the street, too, you know what I'm saying? Like, the police was developing a strong dislike for him, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, a strong hatred for him because innocent people's lives was getting taken, you know what I'm saying? His name was getting thrown around, you know what I'm saying? So... It was just a lot of animosity from a lot of sides, you know what I'm saying? And, but the music was there, you know what I'm saying? And he, he could take that shit seriously, he was finna go, you know what I'm saying? And right around the time he got killed, it was when he was telling everybody he was finna get signed, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he was saying, June 15th, that's all I'm waiting for. Like, I'm finna go out there, it's, 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 it's coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, so he had a big trip to L.A. planned and everything? Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. So, okay, how did you find out? Or what, what was that moment like when you got the call or... Or what happened? Man, I had my phone on Do Not Disturb. You know what I'm saying? I, I was on the run at that time. You know what I'm saying? So I had my phone on Do Not Disturb. I was in Texas. And my sister just woke me up crying out, out of my sleep. You know what you, what like, were you on the run for? A shooting. You know what I'm saying? Like a motherfucker basically implicated me in a shooting, but and the police was trying to. Right. Harass me. So, so you just but wanted to get out But they already had let me go. I had, you know what I'm saying? I already got. Proving that not, I didn't do this, you know what I'm saying? But they were just trying to rearrest me for this shit because they had a motherfucker saying it, willing to say that I did it, you know what I'm saying? So right. I went on the run, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that, y'all ain't finna lock me up for shit. But yeah, I was on the run, my sister woke me up crying, you know what I'm saying? They told me Pappy dead, oh damn, what the fuck? Like, that shit just like threw me off. And the first thing I could do is just look at my phone and I just had like 500 missed calls, like literally like 500 missed calls. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, it's like three, four in the morning though. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, so I just, the first thing I do is just go on Facebook, like, and went on his page and just sent the article, like, damn, like, this shit true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I called my brother, and then he was just like, man, bro, like, I'm sorry, like, Pappy gone, you feel me? And I just hung up, you feel me? And I was just in shock, you feel me? Like, I, I didn't even cry, like, till I got on the plane, you know what I'm saying? It came back, like, I was just like, damn, bro, like, that shit was just crazy. I don't really know how to describe the feeling, you know what I'm saying? It just changed my whole perspective on a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? I know you lost a lot of people, but was this like the first person you were super close with who passed? Yeah, that's the closest person around that time that, that, that got killed to me, but Two Cups, he was close because he was like real close with my brothers, you know what I'm saying? And I was real close with my brothers around that time, so I was always in the mix with him and Pooh Bear, and you know what I'm saying? Like all the people that my brother was close with, I usually had like some closely related ties to them because I always go around them, you know what I'm saying? When my brothers went around and shit like that. So when that, when they was getting killed, that shit did have an effect on me too. But when Pappy got killed, that was like my everyday nigga, you know what I'm saying? This is my big brother actually, like before any of that, but this is my everyday, you know what I'm saying, person, you know what I'm saying? So that shit had a real effect on me. Like what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, that was the that was the closest person around that time. You know what I'm saying? Then it just started getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. You know what I'm saying? My big my older brother actually ended up getting shot in the same year. You know what I'm saying? Nine times and he survived that though. You know what I'm saying? And that shit was just crazy as fuck too, cause he almost died. Like he was in the hospital for like six months behind that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was just like it was steady motherfuckers that were just closely around us. You know what I'm saying? Like steady getting killed. You know what I'm saying? Like from around the time my brother got killed because it was just like really just like a, a real war zone on the whole north side at that point you know what i'm saying so a lot of motherfuckers was just getting killed from then to now you know what i'm saying just like a lot of motherfuckers done lost their life to this shit. you know what i'm saying it just like 
they all was close, close motherfuckers. Hell yeah. Right. So you weren't worried about coming back for the funeral at that point, even though you were on the run? Hell no. I don't fuck them. Like, right. It's my whole brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even want to go back on the run, like, after that shit. You know what I'm saying? But I knew I had to. I only stayed in Chicago for, like, two weeks. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I got to go because they was going to start coming. You know what I'm saying? Looking for a motherfucker. So you took off, but then did you end up coming back or? Yeah. The motherfucker who, who, who was trying to come to court on me killed himself in a car accident. So. I came back, you know what I'm saying? And then I, that's when I got locked up for my first gun case. Oh, wow. Right when you got back? No, not right when I got back, but like that same summer. Right. So how did that change things after Pappy passed, though? Like what, what changed in your mind? Like, and, and it seems like you were, you made the best out of it in the sense that you started rapping and like decided right. that you really needed to be the one to keep his name alive. But at the same time, were you just like, absolutely absorbed with like rage and sadness when it happened like how, how did you get out of whatever mental state that put you into man i just knew i had to stay strong for my family first and foremost you know what i'm saying because i got a lot of women in my family four sisters and then my mom and my grandma you know what i'm saying and then like one of the men just got took out the family so i knew i had to stay strong for them you know what i'm saying and that was just my the biggest responsibility that i was trying to you know mm. what i'm saying embrace you know what i'm saying but it just really affected me because that was a, a my one of my role models, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, for him to lose his life, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just really, like, fucked my whole understanding up because I just never thought something like that would happen, you know what I'm saying? Especially this being my f flesh and blood, you know what I'm saying? Same mom, same dad, you know what I'm saying? So that shit just was wild. And then I'm his only little brother, you know what I'm saying? So he really felt like he had to, he had to, you know what I'm saying, take me under his wing and teach me everything it is that I needed to know, you know mm. what I'm saying, to become a man, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, he didn't even get to finish doing that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what fucked my whole understanding up about everything. Like, now I have to, you know what I'm saying? It's not like I don't have other brothers, but I, like, this was your job, like, you know what I'm saying? This is what you expressed to me, you know what I'm saying? And you left in the midst of doing that. Like, that's what fucked my whole understanding up. Like, so now I really have to learn this shit for myself and what I think that you would be teaching me, you know what I'm saying? And get out here and try to learn this shit on my own. And that's how everything really changed, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, did, had you been rapping prior to that? No. Like, really? I, I didn't, no. And you never even really thought about it or? Because everybody that makes beats got to rap a little bit just to yeah, have like, something to I, put on the beats, right? I did when I was like young, before I ever started making beats, like when I first like, I was like seven probably. I was like, fuck it, I want to start rapping with my brothers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then I started trying to do that shit and I was just like, nah, like, that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I can't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I told my dad, like, shit, I don't know how to rap. He like, how you don't know how to rap? Like, and then he was like, what ran with Ken? And I was like, shit, fan. He was like, all right, well, you know how to rap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and then shit, I just, like, fuck that shit. I don't, don't want to rap. You know what I'm saying? Then when my brother got killed, like, and then I was just like, yeah. Now it's like, but it was like not directly after, you know what I'm saying? It just took a little second, like probably like eight months after my brother got killed. I really like made the decision in my head, like, man, I think I'm going to start rapping, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just really do that shit, you feel me? For bro, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And then I didn't do it though. I just wrote a few raps and then I was like, damn, this shit look, he kind of raw, you feel me? Like, I just like try to think like, what would, what would Pappy say, you feel me? Like think of some shit like I right, bet write that shit down but like I never rap on my own beats for some reason like it's just like yeah. I couldn't rap to my own beats like I couldn't even bring myself to do that because I just feel like man all these beats is for Pappy like you feel mm -hmm. me so I never rapped on my own beats like them there's still to this day only a couple of my own beats but yeah I just started writing shit and then like almost like a before it was a year after he got killed, I went to the studio, you feel me? And I recorded my first song, Letter to Pappy, you feel me? And I mm -hmm. dropped that shit. And that shit was, went crazy, like, over crazy. And I was just like, damn, they fucking with this shit, you feel me? I bet, like, now nah, I know I really got to do this shit. I can't really look back at this point. Mm. And then I, but before I had dropped it, I had sent it to my sister, my brothers, my family first, you feel me? And then a few of my homies, and they were just like, damn, yeah, like, this how you coming, you going crazy, this shit raw, like, for this to even be your first song, like, this shit raw, like, this shit better than nigga songs right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm just like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? So I started to take that shit serious, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, too, because, you know, in a lot of cities, you might have somebody pass away and 
they don't have that many people who are like relevant artists who pass away from that city. But in Chicago, it's kind of like you're at risk of there just being so many up and coming artists who pass that it's like, you, you know, if, if you don't keep somebody's name alive, then you kind of run the risk that the city might not necessarily like they're not necessarily going to do it unless you're the one doing it. Was that right. kind of part of the feeling? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I already knew, like, my homies, you know what I'm saying? They was rapping, too, you know what I'm saying? My boy Kimo started rapping, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, and he was blowing up, you feel me? My big brother B-Double was rapping. My homie Bang, Moosey, when he got killed, though, you know what I'm saying? Right around the same time as my brother. And so they was rapping, and they was going crazy, but it just, like, man, like, I just felt like the responsibility fell on me, like, at the end of the day, like, I had to do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, my brother was just talking to me, like, man, like, you gotta do this shit, you know what I'm saying? So I just came to that conclusion, like, I gotta do it, you know what I'm saying? Because who else gonna really, like, I, I won't feel right with nobody else doing it but me, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like he still gets the amount of respect that he deserves in the city and shit? Like, do you still hear his music played enough Hell and yeah, stuff? Yeah, man, and to this day, like, man, he got that respect for sure, like, cause every motherfucker I already know, like, he, he damn near the best motherfucker to ever, do this shit, you feel me? Like out the city, you feel me? So that's everybody understanding. Like man, like if he was here, he'd be the best. Like that's what everybody t uh, tell you in Chicago. Were you shocked when you heard TK say his name? Man, that nigga TK <laughs> was crazy. As I heard that song before it ever even was like big like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, damn, that's what's up. And what's crazy is where he from is actually where I was at when I was on a run in Texas. Like, really? And. Yeah, you feel me? And I, that shit crazy because I was out there and it's a motherfucker that he, that they said that uh, he killed or whatever, like they accused him of, but I was at that nigga house before, you know what I'm saying? Like I bought some weed from dude, you feel Whoa. me? Like, and that was my, my homie, big brother friend, you know what I'm saying? A nigga named Ethan or some shit, you know what I'm saying? Then when I came back to Chicago in 2016, they had, my homie Gotti had called me out there like, hey, bro, you know that nigga Ethan got killed. Ooh, ooh, I'm what? Like, he hell yeah. And I'm like, damn. Like, and then later on down the line, I ended up finding out that TK was locked up for that same shit. I'm like, this shit is small world. So I'm like, what the fuck? asking my homies, like, do y'all even know him? Because I wasn't from out here. And they like, no, nah, we don't know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we never a, seen him He was just a you know fan, and like, he just happened to mention him. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that should be wild, wild as hell. But free TK, though. I fuck with his music. He, he actually nice with that shit, too. No, yeah, the TK thing, we were all talking about that the other day. I mean, that was that was a wild scenario where you have somebody who was just, like, really good but hadn't really popped off at all, and then everybody basically found out about him at the same time yeah. at the exact moment that he got picked up for that case. Yeah, because shit, like... <laughs> He, he must knew he was getting locked up or something because shit, he ain't even them to get to shoot another video or nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, he was already on the warrant. He had one of posters in the video, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that shit is crazy though. He ain't even get to enjoy that shit, man. Mm. No, definitely. But did it feel like kind of a, an honor to have TK even mention his name? Like, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a big up, you feel me? Because that's a whole other side of the world, you know what I'm saying? And just like, for bro to have that influence on the motherfucker, I'll I, I be respecting that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Love. So on the total opposite end of the respect spectrum, how did you feel when you heard Six Nine using some of his lyrics and songs? Man, I ain't even hear that shit to be honest. I just be seeing shit like that over the internet. Like, it's just certain motherfuckers I don't even entertain when I see their name. Like, his ass a goofy. But when he was doing that at first, it was like he used his lyrics before he snitched and stuff, right? So did you have a different perspective on it earlier when you first heard it? Or? No. Like, so ever since I seen this ass, I'm like, man, this ass, <laughs> this ass is weird. Like, he didn't have to snitch for you to think he was you a feel bozo? Me? Like, I just was like, bro, I don't fuck with dude. Like, you right. feel me? Like, I ain't never really like his ass like that. You feel me? He just was like a, a goofy. You feel me? And I could tell. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I hear it. But it's love, though, if you feel me, he shot a bro out. But now it's like, yo ass overly ratted, bro. Like, mm. fuck dude, you feel me? Because you're <laughs> definitely from an environment where you can't tolerate any degree of that, right? Hell no. Mm. I ain't with none of that, bro. Like, a nigga told on my homie, like, mm. and he fighting for his life. From your perspective on some street shit, do you see people snitching way more these days? Because I always hear that from my friends out here who are still kind of in the streets or whatever. They're like, bro, it's just nothing like it used to be. Man, niggas been snitching. I don't know. <laughs> like, this shit, like, this niggas been snitching, bro, since mm -hmm. back then. Like, this shit ain't nothing new. They just be saying that because the young generation, you feel me? It's, it's our time now, and you feel me? Like, it's so much shit happening, you feel me, that's going on, and all this shit is publicized. That's that's why 
the internet is relevant. You can see this shit all over. You feel me? Like, but back then, like, you ain't know what the fuck was going on in Georgia when you was in Chicago like that, unless you was out there. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, so a motherfucker didn't really know, but niggas been telling. Mm. When when you saw, because there was a quote that you said where you said that when the cops came to your mom's house to try to talk to him, that they actually were like basically telling her that what was the quote that they told her that they didn't give a fuck oh, or yeah, that they, they was like they was just basically telling her like yeah we happy your son dead and we gonna kill your other two on my soul exact words right at the dope my mom my sister spit on their ass and ran in the crib spit on them Hell yeah. whoa and they ran and they ran away from him the cops just didn't try to follow him or anything holy shit that situation could have turned bad they did but shit motherfucker slammed the door in their face they ain't try to get in the crib or nothing you feel me like right is that like the attitude that you felt like you've dealt with from cops over the years that they straight up don't give a fuck and like that they just really it's almost like a joke to them all this shit happening yeah like uh they 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 want motherfuckers to die you feel me like this is their whole purpose of how they even do the shit that they be doing like dirty police you know what i'm saying like they want the, the worst for a motherfucker no matter what it is you feel me whether they give you a lot of years of your ass down here you feel me like they want that shit like they happy they you doing their job for them that's how they look at this shit you know what i'm saying but i ain't gonna say that all police is like that you know what i'm saying because there's some motherfuckers that that is not tolerating the shit that these other police be doing you know what i'm saying they don't even do have the shit that they be doing like since i've been out like i've been seeing them kind of police because i've been around my neighborhood you know what i'm saying and, and They'd just be like, man, like, we not, you know what I'm saying? We not trying to tell y'all y'all have to leave or no shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Just because y'all move y'all cops or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Versus back in the day, these old police would just stop, get out, chase us already, you know what I'm saying? Like, God damn, we ain't, really? you ain't told us shit. All we doing is walking or standing here. Y'all already getting out the car, you know what I'm saying? Because it's however many of us, so you know what I'm saying? We just look like something, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit just be crazy. But like I said, it's not all of them, but a lot of they ass be... One of the worst for a motherfucker. This is their agenda. They plant shit on people. They do shit to just have you at your worst. Right. And it feels like, you know, because I'm always interested in in that dynamic between the people who are in the streets and the cops and stuff. Because they're saying that it's like the worst for shootings in Chicago this summer that it's been in years and years. Like, is, does it feel like that when you're out and about? Like, that it just feels <coughs> like shit is crazier. You would think with the coronavirus, people would be staying home more, so there would be less opportunities to shoot each other. I mean, this shit the same shit to me. Like, that's how I look at it. Like, when you out and about throughout Chicago, you not finna just be seeing motherfuckers getting shot. Like, unless it's you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't finna just be a witness to a motherfucking crime like that. You know what I'm saying? You just gonna you hear about, hear the about news, it. Yeah. You feel me? Like, see this shit. Motherfuckers talk about this shit on social media. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in Chicago, everybody know everybody. You feel me? So word travel fast out there. You know what I'm saying? So you would just hear about it. You know what I'm saying? Just get the call or something. But... Unless you was there with a motherfucker, but you don't, when you in the mix, you don't be thinking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? You just see the articles and shit like they the motherfuckers who paying attention to this shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like this shit been going like this for years for us. Like this is our whole lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So we not really paying it. We not looking at it from no numbers perspective, really. You know. Mm. I feel you. What uh, what was the situation with this video that went viral of y'all running up on Rico Reckless and trying to figure out what what his problem was? Oh yeah, like his uh, it's a goofy too. You feel me? He another six nine ass nigga, but <laughs> you feel me? He Heard he got an OnlyFans. I don't know what's to him. I don't keep up with his ass, but okay. He uh yeah, I guess he had said some shit about my brother, you feel me? But I never really heard the shit. I guess I was locked up when I heard the shit, you feel me? Like, but then I got out, you feel me? And I was uh. Um, this around the time my mixtapes was just going crazy, you feel me? So he had a song on that, like, he remixed Black Youngster Birthday, you feel me? And mm -hmm. I heard him, like, shout out my brother, you feel me? Like, he was like, free spaz, R.P. Pappy or some shit, you feel me? So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this nigga weird, you feel me? Like, so when I seen him, I'm just like, you feel me? I know you said free spaz, R.P. Pappy, but did you say, you feel me? Like, fuck, bro, type shit, you feel me? So that's what the whole thing was, you feel me? But... He basically saying like I don't I don't really know what the fuck he was saying. It just it didn't like once he said he said like you know what I'm saying the disrespectful shit. It was just like it's that you feel me like motherfuckers mm. on that with you. You feel me? But, so what happened in that actual video? Like was what was that physical altercation like? Cause you can't really see it in the video. You just yeah, my, hear it. My homie bust his ass for his ass was beating his ass. You feel me? We all got to beating his ass and his ass was crying all type of shit. But you feel me? Of course he gonna make it seem like some whole other shit, but. He was out there by himself. None of his people helped him. You feel me? Like, Man, motherfucker really? beat his ass and got out of the, the police came. We had to check it to a whole nother hotel, all type of shit. <laughs> Wait, where was that? 
in Atlanta. Oh, that was in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, that was just some whole ironic shit, too, because a motherfucker told us, y'all finna run into Rico Records right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> a motherfucker told us, man, y'all finna run into Rico Records. We, man, get your goof ass. Soon as a motherfucker got out the elevator, my homie called me, like, bro, Rico Records in the lobby. Y'all, what? We down there. Yo ass tweaking. <laughs> that shit funny as hell. What the fuck? That's weird as fuck when, like, the, the Chicago, like, there's been a couple different situations over the years where different Chicago guys run into each other in different states. Yeah. Yeah. Where they like presumably don't have it on them, and it's just weird ass <laughs> arguments slash fight situations ensue and shit. I've seen a couple in the mall over the years and shit. Yeah, man, that should be ironic as hell. God damn. Um, so in terms of like your music career, like like what where do you, what's your perspective on it and stuff? I still see you making moves and shit. I was uh, you had the NLE Chopper yeah. fucking collab from like a year ago or whatever. That was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, that shit went crazy. I had drove out there to Memphis and fucked with him. You know what I'm saying? My uh. One of my cameramans had told me to come out there and do it with him. He was fucking with me, you know what I'm saying? So we did that, shot the video, you feel me? Like we had freestyled the song, you know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. in the video, I don't even remember the song. I'm like, damn, bro. And then we didn't even get the song mixed at first, you know what I'm saying? We just did the song, all right, come on, let's go shoot the video. So when we was playing the song, like we couldn't really hear the, hear the lyrics or nothing. So I'm like, <sighs> Damn, bro, I don't remember what the fuck I said. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's why the video is how it is. I couldn't even, you know what I'm saying, get in my mode how I wanted to. But oh, okay. yeah, that shit definitely went crazy. But I ended up getting locked up right after I did that shit. I never even got to, you know what I'm saying, like really enjoy the fruits of that oh, shit. You yeah, feel me? Like, yeah. I was locked up when that shit got released and everything. Right. Damn, that's so. Where you get locked up for that time? I got, they charged me with an armed violence, you know what I'm saying, possession of a firearm and drugs. But I got I played out to, you feel me, possession of a firearm. It took two years at 50%. So you ended up doing a year? Yeah, I ended up doing 10 and a half months. I got 45 days good time. Okay. Are you fucking sick of going to jail at this point? Is Hell it, yeah. I'm it's got to be getting old, shit, right? Man. Like I can't be steady going back to jail. And then I just did 10 and a half months straight, you know what I'm saying? I was down there. I was really fucking with a lot of older motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? My cellar, he, he was talking to me, you know what I'm saying? Really trying to get me to understand a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? Then my support system on the outside, you know what I'm saying? They was really getting to me, you know what I'm saying? Letting me know that I have to focus on what it is that I want out of life, you know what I'm saying, to really be a successful grown man in society, you know right. what I'm saying? And I was playing a lot of chess, you know what I'm saying, reading a lot of books. Oh, that's dope. So I really utilized my time to my advantage, but I can't I got no more time to get us shit, hell no. Right. Do you, uh, do, does his name, like, like, is it still, like, as soon as you get locked up, is it just immediately like, oh, that's Pappy's brother? Like, oh, like, is everybody still, is the topic yeah, of conversation? Like, that's how it is with any motherfucker known in Chicago. You don't even gotta be a rapper. Like you could just be a motherfucker that a rapper homie. Like a motherfucker gonna be known as soon as you come in. Like oh, that's dude. You feel me? Like period. Like cause everybody know everybody in Chicago. Mm. Definitely. Um, how do you feel about like a lot of the the newer talent? There's been like a lot of different artists coming out of Chicago, kind of blowing up, and a lot of them are more like Polo G and Juice World, rest mm -hmm. in peace, who are kind of more on like the melodic tip, like sort of yeah. like left a lot of the drill stuff behind in a way. Yeah, that shit that shit go crazy. Both of them be going crazy. You feel me? Juice World, he really elevated this shit to a whole nother level. Like Polo G, he go crazy too. You feel me? My boy Cowboy, yeah, motherfucker, mm -hmm. they all Cowboy. Dirt. You feel me? All dirt. they us. Yeah. I, I support all that shit. That is motivational to see Dirk and Herbo still being super relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they been Herb. That's my boy. I fuck with him the long way. Like that's one of my favorite artists. You feel me? Out of Chicago, but it definitely is. They've been going strong for them in ten years now. Mm. So, are you still motivated to keep going with your rap career? Is there ever times where you feel like it just doesn't feel <laughs> like the same as before your brother passed? I mean. Sometimes, you know, you always got them days that's harder than others, but mm. overall, hell yeah, I'm still motivated, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I just, I ain't reached the level I want to be, you know what I'm saying? And of course, there's more things that I want to do in life, you know what I'm saying, besides rap, so, but I'm just using that as a stepping stone, you know what I'm saying? Plus my family, you know what I'm saying, been doing music for years, like this shit. My daddy used to rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, my granddaddy had a, uh, a r and group called The Notations, they actually, had like a was big back in the day had like a number four hit record or some shit you know yeah, what i'm really? saying like hell yeah like i was just uh posted a picture of my granddaddy and james brown on instagram you know what i'm saying like my family been doing this shit oh, you know shit. what i'm saying so hell yeah like i'm just musically this shit isn't better than me so i'm definitely motivated to keep going Damn, as soon as you start talking about your dad and stuff it just makes me think about how hard it must have been to see his son like get so close to yeah. You know, really taking it to the next level and to, to have lost him at that time. You do you, do you feel like does do you 
have you ever had that conversation with your dad about how hard it is for him to to live with that or, or? No, everybody in my family, like, we really not that, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to shit like that, we not that confrontational. So, you know what I'm saying? Everybody mm. just really grieving their own type of way, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I hear that. Yeah, it's got to be at a certain point. It's just hard to talk about, huh? Hell yeah. Damn, I feel it. So, yeah, any, any, what are your plans, like, in terms of moves that you're making going forward and shit? Man, I, for this summer, man, I'm really trying to drop an album, you know what I'm saying? Like, Get some going with that. Drop a lot of visuals. You know what I'm saying. Get some more features. Like I said, my boy Lil TJ fucking with me. Lil Mosey hit me up when I was locked up. You know what I'm saying. Oh, that's dope. Reached out to me trying to do something. So I'm actually was looking to meet up with him while I was out here now. You know what I'm saying. Try to get both of them on the album. You know what I'm saying. And just take this shit to the next level for 2020. 2021 you know 2020 we're about to be 2021 that's scary though we, we missed most of 2020. hell yeah and then <laughs> i was locked up for this shit then and when this corona shit first went down like man the jail shit went haywire you know what i'm saying you were like, locked up when you found out about it yeah this, oh man this corona shit first really started getting relevant in jail around december then like february they like put us on lockdown like all together like no inmate movement like mm. you don't leave the dorm none of that shit you feel me so we just seeing that shit on the news, the numbers steady increasing, then that shit finally hit the US and then they just, this shit getting really serious, then that shit start hitting the jails and then it's just like, what the fuck? Then I'm like, man, I just hope they guys let me out. I don't want to stay in here for this shit. Did then. they let you out early because of it? Hell no. Oh, no. <laughs> they, they, they let motherfuckers go from the county though, but shit, they wanted all their time out of me. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah. God damn. Um, all right, so anything else we missed? Anything we got to talk about that, that you got on the way? Man. I got this gang member part two on the way. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my hottest songs. You know what I'm saying? They fuck with. So I got that part two coming. Make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Back to myself album on the way this summer. Make sure y'all stay tuned for that, man. Shout out my whole team, man. Shout out Loop. You know what I'm saying? You know how we coming, man. Shout out Lucci, man. Shout out BU, Free My Big Brother, man. Shout out the Chance Takers. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my super producer, 12 million. You know what I'm saying? Shout out everybody in my corner, man, on my side, all my family, my sisters, my mama, my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Shout out the mother of my child. You know what I'm saying? For bearing my child. You know? I want everybody to go follow me right now. Instagram, Twitter, at Real Taste You know what I'm saying? There it is. Hey, man, it was an honor. I really appreciate you uh, helping us out with the Chicago history lesson and shit. It's, a very important, it's very important that we don't forget all the, the great artists that we lost over the years. And, Facts. you know, I, I fuck with your music, too, and I, I think you got a lot of potential. You got to keep going with that shit for sure. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you for even having me on here. You know what I'm saying? It's an honor to be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big fan. Like I said, I had Joe Magazine when I was locked up, the penthouse man, lick. You know what I'm saying? I can't Shout believe out my that. boy, no jumper out of 22, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time that anybody ever told me they had that in prison, and that is like such a crazy shit compliment. Shit there, there time. I'm man. Send me every new edition. Holy then they shit. stopped letting me get in that shit. I'm man. They some goofies. I might have to send a box out to all my homies who are in jail. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that shit go crazy. There I'm you go. Up. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you, Taste Sav. It's been a good time, man. Thank you. No Appreciate problem. your time. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.